Ignite Health. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. During the next two hours, the insane Daryl Wayne and I are going to take a look at some issues that face each and every one of us, from your financial health to speaking to an intuitive uh, who says your health is what you want it to be. All that and much, much more. Hi, I'm Mark Allen. Welcome to Late Night Health. Join us at LateNightHealth.com. That's LateNightHealth.com. We are uh, actually recording the show. I am in Washington, D.C. at the uh, Office of the Organic and Natural Health Association. And we thank Karen Howard for making her, her office available uh, to us here at Late Night Health. Check, uh, check out Organic and Natural Health Association online. It's a great group, and it is helping Americans right and left. We'll have to have Karen back on in the next few weeks and talk about one of her upcoming studies. It's actually going on right now. Uh, we've talked about vitamin D, and we have another one coming up uh, uh, as well. Uh, we're going to go to New York City and uh, right now, and we're going to talk to Dr. Tom, Dr. Thomas O'Brien. He has a brand new book out, Medical Marijuana, Real Life Success Stories. Thomas, welcome to Late Night Health. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your show. Oh, well, we're looking forward to it. Let's talk about marijuana. I mean, this has been an ongoing battle between proponents of marijuana uh, for more than 50 years. Right. Is, is, is marijuana, if used responsibly, is it safe? It, it is. And the key word is responsibly. Uh, there's a difference between recreational versus medicinal. And part of what I do in my practices, and what we're doing here today in discussing a book, is to educate the community on the difference um, and I referenced something and uh, within uh, I'm, I'll be turning 55 so when I referenced this and people laugh and I said we're trying to remove the stigma this is not Spicoli at Fast Times of Richmond High you know the, that character <laughs> uh, you know so, and everyone giggles you know the young generation it just it's right over their head and I said well just watch the movie you'll see what I'm talking about um, so my, my, what my role is to educate the community so there is, uh, you know, medical, and I say medical cannabis, and I define it as cannabis versus, and I say, do not use M and D. I do not say marijuana and drug because that brings you into a different place. Um, that's recreational. I'm here to educate you and say, let's talk and say, use the term cannabis, natural medicine, or even a natural supplement. And then when I start to educate the patient and now the community, the, the light goes on. They say, I understand now. So the key is to really educate um, and, and to talk about the actual benefits of, of the plan. It's natural. And I'll give you an analogy. You know what uh, a Vicks vapor up, right? It comes in a jar and it's right. petroleum jelly and it's impregnated with oil from the eucalyptus plant. So we're talking about something very similar, but coming from the cannabis plant. And as soon as I say that, the, the, the light goes on and say, I got it. You know, and you can just see it across the face of the patient. And I say, and I have a smile, I said, that's what we're talking about. It's that right. simple. But petroleum jelly has its problems, too. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that today. Um, doctor, uh, as I left for, to do the show today, I mentioned to my wife, oh, we're talking about medical marijuana. And we do have to address, to a certain extent, recreational use of marijuana. What is your standpoint on that? Um, I, you know, we we're, we live in a, a society that drinks, and right. when I say drinks, uh, alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, and there are constant problems with alcohol. People get right, behind exactly. the wheel after having, you know, half a dozen beers or drinks. And they're accidents. They kill people. Um, right. You know, mothers against drunk driving. Um, uh, it, it's it, it's it's a a can of worms, a big one. What is right. your standpoint on recreational use? Sure, Mike. Well, well, for me personally, and when I told you know my cohorts, those who I grew up with, my friends, and you know I went to college or high school with, and young young childhood friends, I, I am lifetime drug free. 
And when I said I'm doing this, I looked at me and said, really? I said, yeah. I said, you know, once I became educated and I had an understanding of, of the process, and I said, I, I can make a difference. So for me personally, again, like I just said, that I'm lifetime drug-free. Uh, you know, I'm Irish and Italian. You figure, oh, you know, you have wine in your beer. No, I, I'm not just, I never, it never appealed to me. Uh, I'm not a smoker. I was an athlete growing up. I'm not saying that athletes don't, do not do things that they shouldn't be. But I just t- chose that. It's a lifestyle for me. So in regards to recreational, um, I'm not really, and I understand, you know, the patients, uh, well, I'm going to say advocates, they want recreational, but this is my position. Um, for recreational, you have to be, uh, you have to concern, uh, be concerned about the community and those surrounding you. Um, and I'll use the example, like you just said, with alcohol. If you drink responsibly, as long as you do not drink and drive or work while you're under the influence, um, we're okay. It's when you cross over and you drink and drive that affects the community. If you want to drink yourself to death, yeah, it, it could affect the community because of the cost of living and the cost of health goes up because we have to take care of you, you know, and so forth. But when you're dealing with recreational, you have to deal with uh, secondhand smoke, especially if, if that's your uh, delivery system. If, you're, uh, if you smoke, if, if you're using uh, sublingual or different delivery systems, and then it's not affecting other individuals. Um, but when you're, when you're secondhand smoke, and for secondhand smoke, you're, those that you surround are going to inhale and they're going to be affected. And let's say they are working in a, um, they have a career that is federally regulated and they follow the federal rules. So they get random urine tested and they come back positive say, well, I don't take drugs. So, you know, I, I don't do that. Well, you came back positive for, for THC. Well, it turns out their neighbor who does recreational very often and the, the secondhand smoke is seeping through, going up through the, the ventil, ventilation system. Um, that's where, you know, I have an issue with that. Yeah. Well, right. it's just like... Hey, we, we, it, w- it would also seem to me that, you know, I come into your office and I say, you know, Dr. Tom, my back is really, really tense. And you say, you know, it is tense. You've injured your back. You need a muscle relaxer. So you give me a prescription for muscle relaxer. I go, I get it filled. I take it. And then I get behind a wheel of a car. Right. Wrong. That's not responsible. <laughs> You're exactly. Or using heavy equipment. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, right. It's not exactly. smart. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not smart. Yeah. Uh, our guest is Dr. Thomas O'Brien. He's written a book called Medical Marijuana, Real Life Success Stories. We're going to get into that in, in just a second. Um, what about CBD? This is m- very big in the news right now. Um, uh, there's a big gray arena. It's not an yes. area. It's an arena the size of a football stadium uh, <laughs> because nobody really understands the gray level laws. What is your yes. feeling about CBD? Yeah, uh, my feeling is I love CBD. The side effect profile is extremely, extremely low. Uh, what, what I typically see is uh, low blood pressure. That's not bad. And no. sometimes you could have uh, dry mouth, cotton mouth, or even uh, the patient's eyes might be a little drier. And I tell my patients, drink a little bit more water. Um, there's no psychoactive properties associated with CBD because the cannabino- uh, cannab- uh, the CB uh, cannabinol 2 receptors, they're not located in the, in the central nervous system. They're located in the G- prim- primarily in the GI tract, smooth muscle tissue, adipose tissue, and the immune system. So you don't get the, you don't have the side effects of the psychoactive properties associated with CBD. So for me, I use that a lot. Um, you know, I, I pres- you know, I prescribe or recommend, uh, you know, the, the terminology that we we're allowed to use. So I recommend um, the CBD for a lot of my patients. Uh, Instead of a a muscle relaxer, like the example you just gave, I I would prefer to use a a CBD uh, because it it, it relaxes the muscles. It uh, it works, you know, the receptors in the smooth muscle, and I get good results. And and it, it doesn't affect things like the heart and the kidneys that muscle relaxers may. Right, right, right. Exactly, uh, yeah. and but do government officials uh, on a local level understand 
CBD? Uh, you no, know, because <laughs> I was, you know, like you said, uh, very broad gray area. Um, I don't think uh, the, the communities, uh, especially definitely the communities and the medical societies, fully understand uh, the, the the cannabis and how it works and how we extract out uh, the CBD uh, versus the THC product. Um, one right. uh, one issue that yeah one issue that we're seeing right now is uh, the DEA uh, overreaching and uh, trying to not trying but actually they're the rescheduling of CBD to schedule uh, to schedule one, which basically schedule one it, it states that uh, there's no legitimate medical use for medications that are in a category called schedule or class of uh, medication schedule one. Right. Uh, however, the, the advocates are arguing, and we have law firms that are, that are fighting us and challenging this and saying that that's incorrect, that it falls under the, you know, the Farmers Act, and uh, it, you know, it, it does not qualify as a Schedule One, and that's where we have the rub there. And then, the, unfortunately, the Ninth uh, District, uh, the Circuit Court, uh, they, uh, the Appeals Court, upheld, upheld the decision made by the, uh, the DEA to classify it as a Schedule One. All right, Dr. Uh, Thomas O'Brien and I will be back with the Insane Daryl Wayne in just a couple of moments. Don't go away as Late Night Health continues. There's a lot of talk all over the Internet about the remarkable benefits of carbon-60, and baby boomers are especially excited about it. Greska's Carbon 60 is the premium Carbon 60, developed by an aerospace and NASA scientist. 95% of Greska's customers report positive results from this Nobel Prize winning technology in just four days. Imagine more energy, better health, and more vitality. It's very bioavailable to quickly mend toxin cripple cells. This is a super powerful antioxidant. Bob Greska is so confident that you'll love his Carbon 60, he wants to send you a bottle at 50% off the regular price to see how life-changing this will be for you. Call 720-600-6040. That's 720-600-6040. Visit c-60.com to learn more. Call 720-600-6040 now or visit c-60.com. Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back, too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright here now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright here now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthear.com. 